Hello and welcome to the Eureka Masterclass from eurekasem.com.au. In today's episode, I want to cover keyword research. It's one of the most important topics within the online marketing world and very, very important for your business's digital marketing efforts. It will really underpin whether you're going to be successful or not successful with your content marketing, your search engine optimization, and your Google AdWords or any kind of paid media marketing that you're doing online. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump over to my computer screen and I'm going to show you the ins and outs of keyword research. So back over to the computer. Now one of the most important aspects of keyword research is the keyword user intent. If you target the wrong keywords, you'll get people to your website that aren't intending to purchase. They may be in a navigational stage, a informational stage, or hopefully is where you want them, especially for paid advertising, you want them in the transactional stage down the bottom of the funnel. So top of funnel is very much navigational. So we'll just use a, a generic kind of topic and someone that's looking to stop their dog from barking. So the top of funnel would be like the navigating, it could be how to stop my dog from barking. So if you're selling dog barking products, you, you could have a, a dog collar that, that, that uh, squirts water at the dog when they bark. I think there's a, even electric shock dog collars. If you're selling products like that, or um, if there are any other kind of dog barking products like that, if you're selling products like that, it's important to know the keyword intent for the keywords that you want to bid for or target with your content or search engine optimization efforts. Because at the top of the funnel, you're not going to get many sales because people are looking to uh, for an answer to a question. In the middle of the funnel, they may be a little bit smarter. They may be they may start to compare electric dog collars to spray dog collars. They may want to know the ins and outs of is this going to hurt my dog? Is this safe for my dog? How effective is this for my for, for the issue that I'm I'm trying to stop? So it's very very important that what are the top of the funnel keywords? What are the middle of the funnel keywords? And then at the bottom of the transactional, people will be very, very specific in relation to what type of product they're specifically looking for. So there, I had a quick search just a second ago and I found a pet safe rechargeable dog barking collar. So if someone was to say pet safe rechargeable dog barking collar, that one, they're quite specific in the search they're very, very close to purchasing. So pet safe dog barking collar might be a very, very good bottom of funnel transactional keyword phrase to target for paid media. So it's important to have a think about the predisposition of the person that's typing in the keyword phrase and what their supposedly or supposed intent is based behind the keyword phrase that they've, that they've typed in. So that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over to the Google AdWords Keyword Planner tool, show you how to use that. And I'm also going to show you how to use one of my favorite tools that makes keyword research very, very fast and very, very effective. So here we are in the Google AdWords Keyword Planner tool where we can research keywords, find the search volume and start to narrow down on good keywords that we want to be optimizing for building content around or bidding for within our paid paid uh, marketing efforts. So how do we get to this tool? You've got to have a Google uh, AdWords account. You don't have to be paying Google AdWords. You just need the account. Uh, you just go up to tools and you select uh, the drop down menu and you click keyword planner and you come into this section. And I'd like to click the section, find new keywords and get search volume data. So once we come in here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to news.com.au and let's see we can just find a random keyword phrase or industry that we need to optimize for and let's just say female swimwear we'll just use this uh this lady here that's wearing some female swimwear so we, we use the industry female swimwear so let's have it let's say we're in the the female swimwear industry and bikinis are what we're what we're optimizing for so we might say bikini and bikinis now we've got some other search engine um, keyword research targeting options 
Now we can select the specific geographical location here. So we may want to say Newcastle, New South Wales, where I am, and that'll give me the search query data for the keywords that I've selected above for that specific geographical region. I can obviously select states uh, and countries. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, for the moment, we're just gonna put uh, select the country Australia and we're gonna select all languages and we've got the Google search partners, but I like to keep it as uh, Google itself. Negative keywords, I'm not aware of any kind of negative keywords. I don't know too much about female swimwear, so uh, I don't know of any negative keywords I should be aware of uh, as of right now. I've got keyword filters here. If I just wanna select uh, keywords with a minimum or maximum monthly search volume, I can do that here. Suggested, uh, suggested suggested bid volumes or suggested bid prices by Google, I should say, and then add impressions here if I'm actually currently bidding on any of these keyword phrases and we can also select competition. It is important to note that competition is not based upon search engine optimization competition per se, but it's based upon how competitive the paid ad environment is within the Google ad search results or the Google search results. And then we have keywords to include. We, we can actually um, be specific uh, if you wanted to. So like an accounting practice might want to put account at Newcastle. And then you might want to say that all terms have to include the keyword phrase Newcastle. Uh, depending upon the product or service that you uh, are doing keyword research for, would depend upon how you want to you know, skin that cat, so to speak. So once we've done this, we just, we simply click uh, the submit button and we can see the trends over the last 12 months. So it seems to that uh, the female swimwear industry, uh, as it was probably obvious now that I think about it, is as we are in winter, we move into summer, it gets quite popular. But over overall, we see that the average search volume for this keyword phrase is 20, uh, 27,000 in Australia and we can see this the search trend data for that specific keyword and it fits above quite well as in the winter cooler months we had low search volume and in the top months it's uh, it, it's doubling the winter months we can also see that the suggested bid price uh, suggested bid price is 85 cents the competition is higher meaning that there's a lot of advertisers in and around this uh, keyword phrase so what we can do now is we can start to to have a look at related keyword phrases, kind of like LSI, latent semantic indexing, just means relevant keywords to the to the head keyword or keywords that you've that you've uh, uh, put up above. So we can see like high waisted bikinis, and we can see that uh, they'll fluctuate in in, in the average uh, monthly search volume and also in competition. So micro micro bikini is only a medium and we got low here for swimwear 2016. So what I like to do here is I like to sift through and quickly find out, add to plan. So swimsuits, swimwear, uh, bathing suits, a high-waisted bikini, um, monokini, not quite sure what that is. It sounds like it could be just a one-piece one piece bikini. Uh, push up. I'm just going to leave it there because I don't know too much about this industry. But moving moving through, then what I like to do is suggest a bid. I like to because the keyword phrases with the highest suggested bid means that other advertisers are spending a lot of money on these keyword phrases because they've got good user intent and they're making very good conversions. Especially especially when you're in a high competition environment such as this one where the competition is high. We know that uh, swimsuit black, low search volume, high suggested bid, not going to get many searches, but the uh, their intent is high. It's specific swimsuit, bit of a kind of a head term, uh, bit bit in the maybe in the navigational um, uh, area, but black is averaging adding a little layer of specificity that the person is moving down towards that transactional kind of. Um, keyword intent area. So as we move down, I like to have a look at, you know, what kind of search, uh, what kind of search queries have good search volume, 
and high suggested bid prices. They're good ones to optimize content for, your search and optimization efforts for, and also your Google AdWords campaigns around because the intents there, people are bidding good money on it because they are making good money on it. That's essentially, it's as simple as that. There's no real rocket science there. But as we move down, uh, or if we move to uh, uh, segment uh, or uh, segment the list going by the highest searches down to the lower searches, we will see that that the suggested bid is generally lower for some. Now, micro bikini sounds like it could be a small one, so maybe not too desirable. So the suggested bid is low. Uh, plus, plus size swimwear is is kind of high. It's probably about t towards like the higher end, mid mid to higher end for the suggested bid price and the search volume is quite good. So that could be a good keyword too. So you're starting to get an idea of how to look at search volume and user intent along with using that little bit of third party data such as suggested bid to start to mold what type of keywords you should be optimizing your efforts for. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to a, a tool that I like to use and I'm gonna use, keep on going down the theme of female swimwear to see how much more quickly you can find good keywords based on your competitors and how and you can kind of gauge how, how much they're spending and you can kind of have a bit of fun with the math and extrapolate how much they're making. So here, here I am at Ahrefs. It's one of my favorite tools because it's great for search optimization, it's great for content, it's great for keyword research as well. So what I like to do here is we'll keep the theme with Australia and we'll type in, we'll use the same keyword phrase bikini as before. And what we'll do is that this will show the keywords that are related to this, the search volume, and also break it down into uh, some interesting math for us as well. So we can see the search query uh, volume is 21,000, so slightly less than what Google was suggesting. We can see that the suggested clicks are 16,000. 90% of people are clicking on organic traffic, 10% on the paid traffic. So that's quite interesting. We can see how much the paid advertising is fluctuating throughout the year. So we can see in the summer months here, October, November, December, and January, it's quite thick. And as we move into, oh, this is January 2017, we can see it's quite high, quite thick competition there as well. We can also see a full report in other keyword related ideas. And down further, we can see the top three Google AdWord ads, and we can see so see who's bidding on them. And I like to take note of them. And we can also see from a search engine organic uh, perspective who's ranking. We can see the domain uh, domain strength, URL strength, the amount of backlinks, amount of referring domain the suggested uh, amount of traffic that they're possibly getting, uh, the number of keywords that they're ranking reasonably well for, and the top keyword phrase that they do rank for. So we can see here that C Foley, their branded phrase, they're quite a strong brand here, but the rest are, ra are ranking for the, the top keyword phrase, bikini. So what I like to do from here is I like to have a look at the the, the companies that are currently bidding for uh, Google AdWords spots for the keyword phrases that I think are doing quite well. So to research some of the domain names or businesses that are, that are doing work in your space, be it the Google AdWords arena or the organic search arena, what I like to do, click the little down arrow here, uh, open this in a new tab. We watch this load up, it's Frankie, frankieswimwear.com and we can see what they've been doing from a, a, an organic search engine optimization effort, and we can see what they're doing also in a paid search effort. So we move over to the paid tab, and what we can see here, and I'm flying off the cuff here, and we can see that the keyword phrases, the top ads, so we can see the volume, the amount of traffic, the keywords, we can see the ad text. If you're doing Google AdWords, you wanna rip the top competitors' ads mold them together um, to make your own ads. Obviously, you don't want to lie if they're saying things that your product doesn't have. You can't do that. Uh, 
what and then what I like to do is what are their top keywords and I like to rip all the little bug around here and I like to rip all the keywords for, for all my competitors and the ones that they're bidding heavily for and they've been optimizing for I like to have a look at that as well because I want to use the same keywords uh, as long as as well as the ones that I've researched myself and then very very important uh, this company's not doing very well at all. They're sending, it looks like they're sending all of their keywords to their homepage, um, which is not ideal. Just a little bit of a tip as if, if Frankie ever comes across this uh, video, what they should be doing is for keywords such as the micro bikini wife keyword, not quite sure what that is, but they should be sending that to the corresponding category page or product page. Uh, and then obviously Brazilian bikini keywords, they need to go to the Brazilian bikini category page. It cuts out clicks, it just improves conversion rate. They're, they're, they're wasting money by doing that. So you, you're starting to see how you should be optimizing the keyword strategy selection process for your business. Because once you start to find keywords with high user intent, good amounts of search volume, they are golden nuggets. The reason being is that they're low, they're kind of like low hanging fruit. A lot of people go for the high search volume keyword phrases with low intent thinking that they're going to make a boatload of money, but the motivation behind the visitor is low. So getting keywords that have good user intent, transactional intent, good keyword, uh, good search volume, I should say, are golden nuggets. What you want to do there is then use Google AdWords, paid advertising to bid upon them, search and optimization efforts and content efforts to target those keyword phrases. That starts to compound upon itself as the more you repetitively do this process, not so much the paid stuff once that, that's kind of like set up once and then optimize, but the churning out of new content, the new optimization, or, uh, the, the, the optimization in your organic efforts, that's a kind of continual process. And that compounds upon itself. It starts to build kind of momentum and the momentum kind of builds upon of it, uh, upon each other till you've got this uh, little perpetuating machine that's chugging along, bringing more and more traffic. The traffic is fantastic from a return on investment point of view. So the time spent on your search and, optimiz search and optimization efforts and your content efforts, it'd be one of the most lucrative activities within your business. So this concludes this today's Eureka Masterclass on keyword research. If you've got any questions, feel free to email us at Eureka SEM at Eureka SEM .com .au. If feel free to subscribe to our newsletter, we don't offer any kind of paid stuff. It's free. You only get all we do is send emails on updates of our Eureka Masterclass. And if you'd like to see more videos in your YouTube channel like this, please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. All that being said, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next Eureka Masterclass. Bye-bye.